The first 15 minutes of a game are its foundation, its bedrock on which all that follows is built. It's this foundation that determines the integrity of the entire game, whether it stands or falls. This is how the first 15 minutes of Limbo work. A lot of games draw heavily from the world of cinema, and like anything, there is a right way to do it and a wrong way. Limbo is a good example of doing it right. It doesn't chase the same scripted or bombastic style as its contemporaries. It instead mimics film and incorporates film theory without sacrificing the advantages of its own medium. Limbo delves into the filmmaker's toolbox from the get-go, employing distinctly cinematic tricks to achieve its goals. During most of its first 15 minutes, our point of view is almost like that of a telephoto lens. The shallow focus fills background and foreground with vague silhouettes and shadows, and the way the lens squeezes our surroundings together cultivates a sense of scale and insignificance. Then there's the composition of the frame itself. All this negative space makes us feel isolated and alone, lost in a sea of abstract shapes, savagery, and gore. Limbo bears a striking resemblance to midnight movies like David Lynch's Eraserhead, utilizing the techniques of cinema to disorient, disturb, and provoke our appetite for deeper meaning. The initial parallels are hard to miss. The black and white stock, the film grain, the lens vignette, the image even flickers as if it were unspooling on an old projector. Eraserhead is elevated by its evocative use of sound, and the same could be said for Limbo. Distinct abrasive noises identify key moments, alerting us of hazards before we see them, or drawing our attention to hidden solutions. Razor-sharp sounds punctuate each demise, giving the game a staccato rhythm of death and rebirth. Especially interesting is the way Limbo uses non-diegetic audio to unnerve and disturb us. We hear the sound of waves or wind, even though we're nowhere near water and there is no breeze. Now that dissonance between what we see and hear nurtures player anxiety, and Limbo exploits this trick again and again, most memorably here. But if there's one lesson from cinema that Limbo's first 15 minutes benefit the most from, it's the importance of pacing. The first 15 minutes fit almost perfectly into the three-act structure used in modern screenwriting. In Joseph Campbell's seminal work, he describes the inciting incident as an act of departure or crossing the threshold. Limbo takes this about as literally as possible. The game deliberately singles out the boat ride by widening the angle and drawing out the moment giving it a taste of mystique and wonderment. When we come ashore, we feel the gravity of our voyage. This is the first time our hero makes a clear choice to keep going. After this boat ride, there's no turning back. The first act break is when a story establishes its dramatic question and the main character's motivation. In Limbo's first 15 minutes, this moment comes in our first confrontation with the spider, establishing it as the antagonist and setting forth the dramatic question, will we be able to defeat it? The midpoint occurs halfway through and is usually identified by a discovery or twist that spins the adventure in a new direction. In Limbo, it's when we first encounter the native people and realize that we aren't alone. The second act break is the lowest point for the hero, when the answer to our dramatic question seems to be no. This occurs here. Your enemy is bearing down and there's nowhere left to run until at the last moment, the crucial reversal occurs, allowing you to escape and move on to the climax. Everything builds up to this moment. It's your final confrontation with the spider and it's the most explosive spectacle that the first 15 minutes of the game have to offer. And finally, we have our denouement and resolution the last leg of the journey. Though the first 15 minutes of Limbo lack the conventional story typical of mainstream movies, the three-act structure lends its narrative momentum. 
a natural through line which propels the player forward to a satisfying conclusion. This paradigm also paces itself with how we learn to play the game. The first act teaches us the basics, not through instruction, but through intuitive design. The handle here invites us to pull without telling us how, and because the control scheme is so elegant, we can learn it purely by experimentation. Limbo does this a lot, using clever visual cues to guide the player without ever holding their hand. But the game also teaches us with what we can't see. Now there's a water hazard in front of us here, but Limbo deliberately keeps it out of frame until we're either over it or in it. A subtle way of introducing water as an obstacle and prompting players to avoid it in the future. After the inciting incident, our knowledge is put to a test. We have to use the boat creatively to conquer an obstacle, building on the skills we developed just moments earlier. Limbo keeps the learning curve gentle by building puzzles incrementally, introducing us to each element before combining them into something more complex. And the bear traps are a perfect example. The first time we encounter them, they're easily surmountable. In our second encounter, we have to use the trap in combination with another object. This demonstrates that they can be used on other things besides us, which is good to know when we get to the first act break. Moving on through Act 2, Limbo continues to expand on what we've learned, adding new elements and increasing the difficulty. As we approach the midpoint, however, the puzzles take on a different character. They become malicious. They're not just obstacles anymore, they're traps set specifically to kill you. This reflects the major twist in Act 2. Finally, Limbo brings us to the climax. The game has taught us everything we need to know to beat the spider and now requires us to use that knowledge under pressure. And so, we claim victory from the jaws of defeat, our dramatic question is answered, and our quest continues for another 90 minutes or so until it just sort of ends. If there's one major flaw in Limbo, this is it. As good as the first 15 minutes are, the rest of it never quite lives up to them. Once the spider is defeated, no other goal or purpose takes its place. The natives disappear from the game and we simply move from one puzzle to the next until there are no more puzzles. The narrative through line that makes the foundation so strong is missing from the rest of the building. Now, This doesn't make Limbo a bad game necessarily, but it does make the first 15 minutes a better game by themselves. Limbo occupies a strange place in history. Everyone admired it when it was new, but it was too soon forgotten. Not unlike Eraserhead, its technical ingenuity is often overshadowed by theories and speculation about deeper meaning. And there's room for that discussion, but it shouldn't keep us from appreciating Limbo's exceptionally smart game design in its first 15 minutes. Anyway, that's our take on Limbo. If you enjoyed the video, or if you'd like to suggest a game for future videos, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to rate and subscribe, follow us on Twitter if that's your thing, and we'll catch you next time.